Good morning, everybody. Let us take a time to prepare our hearts and mind for worship this morning. have come to a community of love and hospitality. You have come to a community of worship. Here, you are God's honored guest on this Pentecost Sunday when we celebrate the birthday of our church. We welcome you to Ann Street United Methodist Church. Please take a moment to register your attendance with us using the pad at the end of the pew and then pass it down to those next to you. God is at work in wonderful ways here at Ann Street. Please take time to read all of the announcements in your bulletin and prayerfully look for opportunities for you to share in the ministries of our church. I would just quickly like to call attention to two in particular. One biggie. Vacation Bible School is fast approaching. It's coming up on the 19th. And we know it takes a whole church to raise a child. We always have a lot of children. And so no matter who you are, we can put you to work. So please uh, be thinking about volunteering for that. Also, June 11th through the 17th is our time to have Family Promise again. And we always need volunteers for food, chaperoning, and helping out. So please particularly pay attention to that. Now, if you are able, please stand and join me in our opening prayer. Spirit of the living God, visit us again on this day of Pentecost. Holy Spirit, like a washing wind that sweeps away all barriers. Come, Holy Spirit, 
like tongues of fire that set our hearts aflame. Come, Holy Spirit, with speech that unites the babble of our tongues. Come, Holy Spirit, with love that overlaps the boundaries of race and nation. Come, Holy Spirit, with power from above to make our weaknesses strong. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Please remain standing for our hymn of praise, number 555, Forward Through the Ages. with one another, and then the children can come forward for a children's sermon.
Okay, do you have special things during the year that you like to celebrate? What are some of the things we celebrate? What, what do we celebrate? Christmas. Christmas. We celebrate Christmas. No, my mommy said my birthday. We celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. Fourth of July. There are wonderful times that we like to celebrate during the year. And today is one of those special days. Today is called Pentecost. And that's a big word to mean that it's about 50 days after Jesus rose from the dead. But something very special happened on Pentecost because his 11 disciples had been very, very scared. It would be just like you all are here with your mamas. They were in a room and all locked up and so scared that people were gonna come after them and kill them too. But on Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came and he put flames, tongues of fire on their head and they started talking and people, no matter what language they spoke, could understand. And that day, so many people came to know Jesus and that was the start of our great church today. So he took those people who were scared and he turned them into powerful people that started our church. So today, we're going to celebrate the birthday of our church. So Worth, Randy, will you all come up here? We have a cake to celebrate. <laughs> Whoops, you might have to go all the way up. Yeah, you might have to go up behind. Okay, you can stand right over here. And when I say three, you all blow out the candle. You ready? One, two, three. <sighs> It's a trick candle. <laughs> okay, let's stand right here. We want to thank Miss Harriet Kirk for our cake. We will be serving it to everybody over at Ch Sip and Chat. So I'm asking all of you to join us now as we sing Happy Birthday to our church. Happy Birthday. Okay, stay still just for a minute because I do want to have a prayer before you go back to your mamas. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for Pentecost. We're thankful to celebrate the birth of our church. Just as long ago, you turned men who were scared, afraid, into giants of faith, courage, and power. Do the same with us. Use us to spread your church throughout the world. Amen. Our Psalter reading this morning is on page 826. And the words are from Psalms 104, 1 through 13, and 24 through 35. Please join me. Bless the Lord, O my soul. The Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, and cover yourself with light as with a garment. You have stretched out the heavens like a tent, and have laid the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot, and ride on the wings of the wind. 
and make the winds your messengers. You set the earth on its foundations so that it should never be shaken. You cover it with the deep as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains. At your rebuke, they fled. At the sound of your thunder, took to flight. They rose up to the mountains, ran down to the valleys, to the place which you appointed for them. You set up bounds that they should not pass, so that they might not again cover the earth. You make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow between the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. Above the springs, the birds of the air have their nest. They sing among the branches. In your lofty place, you water the mountains. With the fruit of your work, the earth is satisfied. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom, you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. There go the ships, the Leviathan whom you formed to play with it, in it. And all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. Turn to death. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God, all I have been. May the meditation be pleasing to the Lord in whom I rejoice. Be consumed from the earth, and let the wet be no more. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. The Lord be with you. How wonderful it is to share in the reading of Pentecost, the day in which the Holy Spirit was given to the church. Will you hear these words from Acts 2, 1 through 21? When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound, like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, 
And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 2004. Do you remember this was before Katrina and it kind of redefined what a storm disaster was? But 2004, do you remember there was Francis, Hurricane Francis? It hit Florida with a real ferocity. And it was about the same time a little while after uh, that happened, that a new website, or fairly new website, was really taking off in popularity. eBay. Now it's just kind of, everybody knows about eBay. You just, you go on and you sell, it's like a, it's like a yard sale or a garage sale or a, a flea market, I guess, but, but it, uh, of all kinds. After Hurricane Francis, people decided, let's see what kind of things we can sell on eBay. One person sold little vials containing some of the rain that fell in the hurricane. Another woman auctioned off the t-shirt she wore outside in the storm. But perhaps the most unique was that someone put up for sale Tupperware containers in which they said they had captured the hurricane's wind. Sure enough, moments after that wind was put on the auction block, someone had bid $10 for it. I don't know what it ever finally went for. The problem is, of course, you can't put wind in a container. When it loses its windiness, its wildness, it loses its power. In England, uh, some years before that, they did a study of uh, air quality. And they measured the air quality in different kinds of environments. They went to a shopping area. Uh, they went to a school, or several shopping areas, several schools, uh, the beaches, the street corners, the busy streets, the countryside. And they also took a sample, a representative sample from churches all over England. And what did they find about the air quality of these places? Well, interestingly enough, the air quality in the churches was some of the worst. And it was, sure, there were probably some allergens and that kind of thing, but it really wasn't that so much. They said it was candles, incense, but the biggest problem was, and these churches, I mean, our building is old, but these are, our building's young compared to a lot of those buildings that they measured. They said the age of the building, uh, but also the improper ventilation, stale air, that wasn't moving. You get where I'm going with that, don't you? In the churches, they said that that air was just as bad as some of the street corner air, was of the busy street sides. Air that's stale, that doesn't move, is not wind. The Holy Spirit moves. Yes, it was a windy day in Jerusalem some 50 days after Jesus' resurrection, hence the title of the day in uh, Pentecost. We're told that the disciples, although it was existed before, uh, it was a Jewish holiday before the Christians, but we're told that there in that special room, in that windy place, they were all gathered. They all spoke different languages. Luke says the nations to us. He lists them off as if to sort of say, you should have been there on Pentecost Sunday. We had a huge number of visitors at church. Some from Montana, some from Arizona, some from Michigan, not to mention the van load of Assyrians and that cute little Hittite couple that signed the attendance pad. But at some point, they felt the rush of a mighty wind. The Holy Spirit was given to them just like Jesus had promised. And they began to understand one another in various languages, languages they didn't already know. You see, it wasn't uh, that they were speaking a secret language. They were speaking 
their languages and others and understanding. It was a gift of understanding. They are filled with new wine, someone sneers, but Peter says no. He says it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. Meaning what? Check back in the afternoon when the party's really swinging, you know? No. He tells them it's a, a spirit that was prophesied. That there would be new days when God's Spirit will be poured out upon all flesh. And he quotes Joel. Not just chosen people, not just 11 male people, not just good church people, but young and old, male and female, slave and free. And there it was then on that day that the church began in earnest. I mean, before that, you had uh, wonderful followers of Jesus, his disciples, his uh, a retinue, many people, that crowds that would come, but it was the start of something new, yet familiar. For it was Jesus' own spirit that they received. Now at the 11 o'clock service today, we're going to have our seniors, our high school seniors with us. They'll be starting new chapters of their lives. Uh, other graduations are happening this week. Our preschool kids are, are, that are old enough are moving out of there. And at the same time, the uh, kids at the middle school and the elementary school are moving up. I've got, uh, we, my wife and I have one in eighth grade and one in fifth. And so, and the ceremonies are at the same time. So we're going to divide and conquer. One go to one and the other go to the other. It's that time when of all, in all different kinds of ways, there's matriculation, not just of the students, but of all of us. New days come upon us, new experiences, changes come to all of us. And like the Pentecost event so long ago, we might feel sometimes in those times of change a fresh breeze of the Holy Spirit. Those who are itinerating in ministry uh, feel that and, and look for that breeze. God's Spirit illumines our path, enlivens our hearts, and gives us peace. God goes with us. And if the book of Acts is any indication, God's Spirit will propel us wherever and however we may be into God's preferred future. We may value tradition and continuity and stability and order, and most of the time that's a good thing. But every now and then there's a wind at our backs and a fire in our bones. And in those times, we may even be envious of those new graduates. For we serve a living God who is on the move with a very windy spirit that cannot be contained in Tupperware. And without the Holy Spirit, well, we're not much more than another group of polite but really several, sort of ordinary people. It's the Holy Spirit that makes us church. Not our friendliness, not our mission, not our groups and classes, uh, not our history. All of those are outgrowths of the one thing that makes us church. Only one. The Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God. May God go with us and the Spirit blow wherever we go. Amen. In response to the word of the Lord, please stand if you are able for the Apostles' Creed that is found on page 7 in your hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
seated. At this time, I'd like to invite those who are assisting me with the pastoral prayer today to come forward. I'll tell you before I read the prayer concerns that uh, we are going to have a special prayer for Pentecost uh, today uh, in which uh, these uh, members have come with me to uh, offer up portions of our prayer in languages other than English too, uh, just for uh, remembering and celebrating how the people at the Pentecost event uh, understood and spoke in, in different languages. So uh, we welcome them and thank them for that that service. Here are these concerns and needs and, and indeed uh, thanksgivings that we offer to God. For the family of Patty Dill, for Barbara Noe, for Pat Osborne and Judy Betty, for Justin with thyroid cancer, Rana Genovese, and Jerry Crocker, Rose Tankert, Iris Noya, Betty Jacobs, the Harrington family, Shelba Spivey, Bill Orell, and Newton Miller having surgery. May we also pray for the family of Carol Heyman this week, and indeed also for Ronnie Creech, Debbie Rue, John Matthews, and Francis Lupton. May God grant favor upon all of these. Let us pray. God of wind, word, and fire, we bless your name this day. Look with favor upon us, your people, as we offer you praise and prayer for these sisters and brothers in Christ that we have named before you this morning. We ask your care. Heal those who are broken, release those who are bound, and bring your will and your ways to bear in our lives our community, and our world. We give you honor and glory this day for the graduates that will come before us. And this day, we pray that we will all honor you with the new works and things you are doing in our lives. On this great day of Pentecost, when your Holy Spirit was given to the church, we remember how you also brought great understanding to the disciples and the followers of the way. By your power, they could understand each other's languages, and so too we seek to understand and bring you an offering of prayer in some of the languages of the earth. Dieu du vent, du mont et du feu, ne vous bénissons votre nom ces jours pour envoyer la lumière. Et la force de votre saint esprit. Nous vous remercions de tout le cadeau, génial à petit, que vous avez versé à vos enfants. Acceptez nous avec nous d'un pour vivre longé et témoigner dans, vos, dans tout de la terre. Ô oh, Sandy, ni son sen sen. Shindin 相信给大家所有的创作神恩 Though we have not yet received all gifts of understanding, O Lord, we're reminded that your love and grace are available to all throughout the world, and we thank you this day 
for your many gifts and for your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Beth. Thank you. At this time, we uh, recognize our seniors. We invite Elizabeth Villegas, our uh, Minister for Children and Youth Activities, to um, help guide us in this presentation, and she'll uh, invite others to come forward. The Lord be with you. On this special Sunday, we celebrate our graduating seniors and their families. As their name is called, their accolades and achievements will be read before you, the congregation. Sabrina Morgan Duncan, varsity cheerleader, swim, and soccer. UMYF member and two-time Costa Rica missionary. Riley Elizabeth Galician, soccer, marching band, beta club, National Charity League, and top 20% award. Rockman Garrett Hardiston, golf team, UMYF member. Daniel Everett Hunt, FFA, UMYF member, as well as Costa Rica missionary. Miller Davis Kittrell, Beta Club, Baseball Team, Principals List, Honor Roll, MYF. Jenna Brielle McCreary, Soccer, Volleyball, Principals List, Costa Rica Missionary. Katherine Austin Nelson, Varsity Soccer, UMYF, Vacation Bible School Volunteer. Cameron Gray Sabiston, President's Educational Award. Seniors, as you prepare for your graduation, never forget those who have helped you along the way. Your school teachers, your Sunday school teachers, your parents, your family, and the church family here today. You do not graduate alone. The Lord God, through his providential care of you, has given each of you an opportunity to invest in the people sitting here and them in you. As you leave this place and begin a new journey, remember that we will always walk with you. And to the congregation, look upon these faces and remember to hold them in prayer. In the Methodist Baptismal Covenant, the congregation replies that we will help the parents in bringing up their child in the Christian life. That covenant is still true today. As our graduates end their high school career, please remember to support them in any way that you can through prayer, love, and time. Please pray with me. Today we recognize a graduation, Lord. Today we pray for those who have met the challenges and kept the faith to their commitments of their studies as well as to you. We thank you for granting them focus and direction and then the strength and endurance needed to create the knowledge and understanding that they have mastered. You have created the curiosity and capacity to lead them in this pursuit. All the good things have come from you. Upon this graduation opens another door to another time. As you have led them in the past, now lead them into the future. Give them focus and clarity and a calling from you to understand their purpose and courage to respond in the steps that will follow. O oh, eternal God, bless the schools, colleges, universities, careers, and journeys. Let them be lively centers for sound learning, new discovery, and a pursuit of wisdom. May they find you to be the source of all truth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, now I'm going to ask a few scholarship chairs to come on up and present their scholarships or say a little bit about what they have. The Wesleyan Circle. Anyone? Come and join me up here. Right. Other chairs, will you come and join me up here so you'll be closer when it's your turn to come up? Come on in and join me if you would, please. Okay. 
Ready? We are so proud and happy to honor our students who have done so well. The Wesleyan Scholarship has been going on for eight years now, and we are able to do this through the generosity of Miss Jerry Beveridge, a beloved member of our circle and of our church. She left us funds because she loved the students so very much, as we do. I will call the names of the 2017 Wesleyan Scholarship recipients at this time. As I'm sure many of you know, a lot of these students are away working all over the country, uh, taking classes, um, doing camps, um, internships. Not everyone could be here. So if your, uh, senior, if your recipient is not here and you're a family member, please come down and accept the award for them. Um, Wesleyan Scholarship recipients for 2017, Jared Briley. <laughs> Jared is a student at, UN, at East Carolina studying music. He has excelled and he's a repeat scholarship winner. We're very proud of Jared. Allie Caton. Allie's brother is going to accept for her. Allie is in Minnesota at a camp for students uh, all over the world. She's working with counselors from many countries and she's having a wonderful time in Minnesota. Thank you for being here to accept her award. John Duncan. John could not be here today. He is a student at Appalachian State and he is working today. Thank you for being here to accept his award. I failed to mention that Allie Caton is at Campbell University. Okay, Riley Galician. Riley is getting ready to go to Meredith College where she is gonna be involved in a wonderful honors program. We're very proud of Riley. She's a first year recipient. Matthew Harmelink. Good. Matthew is in Massachusetts, attending the Massachusetts Maritime Institute. He has not been, uh, he's not finished his term yet, so his mom is here. Thank you so much, Judy. Mason Hardison. Mason is a student at East Carolina, studying nursing and a repeat uh, scholarship winner. She is very, doing very well in school. Gabriel Marge. His grandmother is going to accept his scholarship. He could not be with us today. Tell me what school he is going to. You told me before. A school in, uh, but where is he going to college? Hofstra, Hofstra University in New York. That's where he's going. Sorry, I couldn't remember. Jenna McCreary. Jenna is a, a graduate, 2017 graduate. She is going to be taking online courses from Liberty University. I had it in my brain. And uh, we're very proud of Jenna. She's had a wonderful time in high school and done very well. She's already got a wonderful job working with autistic students. And that's her chosen field of, of work at this time. Her sister, Lauren McCreary. We're so glad Lauren can be with us today. Lauren is a repeat scholarship award winner. She is a student at UNC Wilmington. Emily Owens. Thank you, Jeannie, for being here. Emily is a student at UNC Charlotte. She has just received her bachelor's degree with honors, and she has been accepted into graduate school. She is studying accounting with the goal of being a CPA. These are our 2017 Wesleyan Scholarship winners. The Teachy Scholarship is uh, still accepting applications and you can find some information about that in your bulletin if you're interested. The Jones Memorial Scholarship. Well, this is the first year the uh, Jones family has uh, put forth a scholarship, and the first uh, recipient is Miller Kittrell. Mm -hmm. um, I, I 
asked Daryl if he would give me a moment to speak, and I hope I can make it through this. Uh, the Jones family, of course, you know, has always been very important in this church. But I was raised with the Jones family. Cole and I, Miss Mary Fawn, as little boys, bounced on their bed in their bedroom watching Jungle Jim on Saturday morning. Some of you kids don't remember who Jungle Jim was. And Mr. Howard would come in and say, you boys ready for RC Cola and Moon Pies? <laughs> and we were raised together. Later on, as we got married, we raised our children together. My son still calls him Uncle Cole. I'm gonna upset some people in here today, but this is just the way it is, because I'm proud of this man standing right down here in front. <laughs> Cole went to East Carolina, he graduated from East Carolina, but I am sorry, his heart was in Chapel Hill. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm just sorry, it's gonna upset some people but his heart was in Chapel Hill. And as he and I went along together in life, we shared a tradition together at birthdays and at Christmas time of exchanging T-shirts. And so today, I have Miller's first one to follow along in that tradition. <laughs> Miller, we're proud of you. Make us proud here at church, buddy. <laughs> and the Jared Styron Scholarship. This opportunity to present the Jared Thomas Styron Memorial Scholarship to Miller Kittrell is ex extra special this morning. It gives us a chance, Tom and I, to thank this church family, our friends and our family, for helping us finally remember Jared each year. Many over the years have continued to contribute to the fund in Jared's memory, and we thank you. The Methodist men helped fund this endowment in the beginning with their Easter breakfasts. The Challenger Sunday School class contributed to the fund for a long time. Jared was a founding member of the Challenger Sunday School class. We thank you for remembering Jared in such a generous way. This morning also lets us reflect on how important this recipient's family has been in our lives. Because of the love and friendship of his grandparents, Chuck and Claudia, we are part of this church family. And because of the love and sharing of his great-grandmother, Opal, we are a part of his family. When the scholarship was established, the criteria was set. The recipient had to be a graduate of East Carter High School, be in the upper 10% of the class, an active participant in extracurricular activities at school, active in their community and in their church, and by a written essay, prove their understanding of doing good unto others. Miller, beyond a shadow of a doubt, meets all of these requirements. We are so happy to present this Jared Thomas Styron Memorial Scholarship to Miller Davis Kittrell. Remembering God's great generosity and blessings on us, let us return to God our tithes, offerings, and gifts. The ushers and acolyte can come forward, please. Every blessing. 
On the day of Pentecost, they were all gathered in one place, as Luke tells us. But they didn't stay there. They went out. May you go now in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit that is given to us. Amen.